The Twins won the battle, but did they lose the war? No, it's obviously way too early to say that, but they did have a couple players come up lame, including Royce Lewis. So we'll talk about the prognosis for him. We're waiting some results of some imaging in the Twins reading that. Beyond that, though, a great opening day. We'll talk to Dave Brown about it. He was there. This is Locked on Twins. You are Locked on Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello again and welcome back to Locked On Twins. I'm your host, Brandon Warren, and you can unfollow me on the X at Brandon underscore W-A-R-N-E, trying to get myself here lined up in the screen because we're a little bit off kilter. But Mr. Dave Brown is here, home from the K, the big K, opening day at the K. You can follow him on Twitter at Answer Dave Brown. Dave, I... Based on your face, I think you can tell that I'm in some stage of delirium from just being wiped out by chlorine today. <laughs> the pool of the uh, hotel. Yeah, yeah. It was like a, a contact high from all the chlorine. It's it's not good. You, my daughter got really sick at dinner and like she's got pink all over her face. And it's like, yeah, maybe we should talk to somebody about this. But anyway, thanks for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every day. And we're your second listen today if you're listening right when it comes out because that's a two-episode Thursday for you. Or if you're listening first thing Friday, we're top of the morning to you. We're excited to have you. But uh, yeah, we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts as well as on YouTube. And of course, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. We love to have active listeners in the comments, whether it's live on YouTube or giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, all that fun stuff. We love to hear from you. But again, if you want to be part of the show, hit us up, leave a comment, leave a message. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to talk to you. Dave, the Twins, though, won four to one, and it was actually kind of fun. You were texting me little bits and little updates, and at one point when the Twins offense hadn't quite picked it up down the stretch, you're like, boy, this feels like it's got the hallmarks of a Royals uh, you know, stealing one with a come from behind win in the in the ninth. Now that didn't happen. It did happen last year. Bobby Witt Jr. had a big home run against the Twins, but I think it was actually a grand slam, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, um, I digress. Uh, not nothing like that happened. Twins get some runs late, win four one. But again, not all uh, puppies and rainbows and all that good stuff. There were some tough moments in the game, and they came pretty early. Well. Royce Lewis got off to another great start by hitting a home run. I couldn't believe it wasn't a grand slam, though. I'm sure he'll work on that. Um, yeah. But uh, just to, and and Rocco marveled after the game about, boy, he did it again. You know, it's like every day. <laughs> and I know we just started the season, but he's thinking back to the playoffs and down right. the stretch last year. But of course, if you're not if you're not aware, um, I think it was after his second at bat. Uh, Lewis got hurt running the bases. He uh, has a quad injury. That's what the Royals are called. The Royals, the Twins are calling it. The Royals probably would call it that too. Yeah, probably. Uh, we don't. We don't have a uh, strain grade yet, and that will determine the length of how long he's out. Rocco's like, I don't want to speculate about that, but usually these quads, right. I think we're we're talking minimum a week if it's like not that bad of a, of a strain. And but mm -hmm. he had to come out. He couldn't run the bases. So right. I don't know. I, I, I bet we're looking at grade two anyway, which is probably an IL stint. And it's just tough. I mean, the, the pull of emotions, different directions. You know, Royce Lewis, one of the most talented players in the league, obviously, and also one of the unluckiest when it comes to injuries. How did you come away from his post-game availability, regardless of how he came out health-wise? I feel like that personality like that is a clubhouse pillar kind of human being and he's affable he's positive i just i don't know how you can come away from being around royce lewis and not have your mood elevated at least a couple octaves yeah and not be hopeful about tomorrow and uh, right. his uh i think i said something like uh you know his ions are all positively charged i mean he's um and he even said at one point, oh, it was a great day. We had a great game. We won. I hit a home run in front of my family. He tends to look at the bright side of things. You know, mm -hmm. I asked him 
uh, and we have video of it, so I, I don't want to like give the whole thing away, but he's, he lists some reasons why he's a positive guy and, and we'll get into that when we show it. Um, but the other players recognize um, what he brings as far as a personality that goes beyond what he brings as a talent. And yep. uh, he's a teammate that they definitely uh, pull for and glad is on their side and wish that he maybe had better luck with injuries. Yeah. And we have, we have clips from him, Kyle Farmer, and Pablo Lopez. So we'll share those whenever you decide our best because you're going to know the context of them a little bit better. Um, I love how you, you said. Uh, are we close to a break? Uh, as far as about four already? minutes here before we're going to give some let's, love uh, to uh, FanDuel. So we got some time here if you want to listen to Royce or let's, whoever. Let's do Royce. Let's let's play right. what Royce said after the game. We'll, we'll roll Royce, not Rolls Royce, who isn't a sponsor, ah. but hey. We're listening. Um, here's Royce for just a sh uh, shade under a couple minutes uh, addressing the media. And if you're watching on YouTube, he looks pretty dapper too, I might add. So again, if you're only listening, it might be worth running over to YouTube just to get a peek at, uh, at Mr. Royce Lewis. But here he is. When you rounded to second base and you felt the injury, what goes through your mind in that moment? Uh, I was just confused. You know, I honestly just felt like a little cramp. Um, and it just tightened up, you know, as you're running. and. Obviously, that's where you see the hindrance of me trying to score. Um, and then, honestly, the first thing that was in my mind was like, dang, that should be 3-1. Carlos hit it perfectly down the corner there for me to score. And so uh, I actually envisioned that. I'm like, man, he's going to hit one in the gap. I'm going to score. Uh, so I was just more bummed that I couldn't score. Uh, I guess it's at least it's not the knee, you know. And some things that I'm looking forward to are uh, how, how long it's going to be, right, and then what the process is that I can come back and make things work. You've been through so much rehab and working with trainers and doctors. That I'm assuming that's why you're smiling right now because you know you've been able to beat all these things that have come your way and you'll be able to conquer this as well. Yeah, I think I'm just smiling because I was blessed to play. It's my first opening day, all right? So uh, I just look at all the positives. Like I said, you know, I had a beautiful time watching the plane fly over. I don't even know what that was. I've never seen that before. It was like a superhero movie. And then uh, the fireworks and uh, seeing all my teammates and standing next to Carlos and Buck, who are two of my idols. Uh, I you can't, it can't get any better than that. I was just smiling out there and having a great time. So that's why I'm smiling. And, and we got the win on top of that. So it's a great opening day. Does it ever feel like you just can't catch a break? Uh, no, not necessarily. You know, I had a great spring. Uh, I feel like when you do things right, you know, not all the time, uh, it's something I can't control, right? These stuff, and it's part of the game. So. Um, you know, I'll, I'll catch breaks. I come back and make things happen. We'll have some more fun. Where does your positivity come from? Uh, the support, my family, uh, my faith in Jesus Christ, and uh, my teammates, honestly. I could tell that they, you know, they love and care about me, and uh, I just listen to the wisdom and their guidance and uh, enjoy the game of baseball like I have since I was a little kid. And if people aren't watching on YouTube, the two people in frame are Audra Martin and Doe Young Park, and they both smile at least in some form or fashion on the video. I mean, Doe Do smiles a little more, um, less obvious, but I think, it, again, it, you see the kind of energy he has that pervades the area or it emanates from him. And then, you know, you finishing off with that question there, uh, how did you feel about his answer? Because, again, I feel like it's overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, it is. I'm sure uh, fans probably have maybe heard twins fans have probably heard him answer a question like that before. And maybe his answer was similar to what he said, but I, I like the answer. Sometimes when we get answers from players, you can tell they're canned and mm -hmm. you can tell, Oh, they're just saying something to say something. And which is actually sometimes okay too. But this was a case where it was nice that we heard some honesty or, or what I think was honesty. Yep. And yep. I liked that. Um, uh, you know, I believe that he believes in those things, mm -hmm. and, you know, and um, I think he, he answered the question as, as well as he could under the circumstances. Well, how about we tee up the next segment on how good Pablo Lopez was today with Pablo Lopez on Royce. So we can do that quick, take a break and then uh, come back with Pablo, who did what Pablo does. But again, first here, here's a quick clip from him after the game that Dave so lovingly crafted for us. How bad do you feel for, for Royce? Here? I felt so bad. I was, I always sit in the corner. So like I had a straight line and I saw him like limping and then the limping go worse as he was trying to like score. So 
hopefully it's nothing too bad. And Fro is like such a great player. He like is a different difference maker on the field and the club has such a good presence. So I hope it's the best possible scenario so that he can be back with us. Hey, could we Again. do uh, can we do farmer too? It's a short one. Yeah, we may as well. Uh, so Kyle Farmer, or as you shared, Kyle Farmers only. Maybe I'm stealing your uh, thunder there, but I, I don't want to touch your thunder. Um, we will <laughs> we'll hit that and then we'll come back because uh, <laughs> uh, oh, Dave, don't start coughing on me, please. Uh, I started yeah. coughing yesterday before the game and the Twins Clubhouse guy thought I was going to die. Who is that? Was it? Is it Hot Rod? Mike Herman, who used to be. Oh, the yeah, the, the, the traveling... It, well, they don't like traveling secretary, director of team travel. Well, here, here's Kyle Farmer, Kyle Farmer's only. And then we'll, uh, we'll talk about FanDuel, give them some love as the uh, March Madness has picked it up again. And then straight through to the, the rest of the way. But first, Kyle Farmer. A clash of emotions when we see Royce get hurt and not yeah. wanting to let that bother you when obviously it's it would bother anybody. Yeah, it sucks. It really sucks. I mean, the guy hits a home run on a single one. Um, I, you know, I've been around Royce for two years, and he's super positive, and so he'll come back from this. But never really seen it happen to somebody as much as him. You know, it sucks. He's a superstar, and uh, you don't want that to happen to anybody, especially on you know whether it's on your team or not. Right. You know, you, it's good for the baseball, good for the game, and you know he'll be all right. But it, it sucks for sure. All right, well, we'll take a quick break. We'll talk about our friends at FanDuel. When we come back, we will have some more chatter on Royce, but especially some love for Pablo Lopez, who is tremendous. And if you are watching us, you are also probably in some form or fashion paying attention to March Madness, which has again picked back up we're in the sweet 16 you can say goodbye though to your busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every single game of the tourney so even if you had San Diego State beating UConn like I did and they lost by 30 you still have plenty of work to do whether you want to follow up with a big upset or just play the chalk with the one seeds you can go dancing on America's number one sports book with FanDuel because right now new customers get 200 bucks in bonus bets if their first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, or you can even pick who is going to win it all. If you think UConn, the global number one, is going to do it, if you think Houston, like I do, is going to do it, I'm not here to tell you which way to go, but you can visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops till they cut down the nets. Again, fanduel.com slash locked on. That's 200 bucks in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. It's the easiest th decision you'll make here uh, anytime soon. So again, FanDuel, check them out. All right, Dave Brown, uh, we... Saw two pitchers go at it in this one, and both had very good days. Um, I honestly would like to <laughs> see how many pitchers give up a run, a home run, to the leadoff batter and then allow nothing the rest of the day. Or a team gives up a run to the leadoff batter, Michael Garcia right. in this case, and then uh, nothing for the rest of the day. And it only tied the game because Royce Lewis did what Royce Lewis does in the first inning with a big homer. But um, it's just so funny that your first act in a game does not mean that's what your day is going to look like. And I think Pablo typified that about as well as anybody could. Uh, Pablo, who uh, spoke as eloquently about himself and the performance of the, the players as he did about Lewis uh, for a larger portion of that interview, um, you know, said, uh, you know, he, he's the, he goes out there and he um, wants to be, um, and it's slipping my mind, uh, the two words that he used, but they were, it was great vocabulary. You want to, you want to, the, the twins want to stick with it and they want to be, they want to be resilient and they want to be relentless. Those are the words mm. that he used. And he was talking about him, the team, but it was also kind of how he personalized the game himself. And, you know, he, he wanted to not let that bother him and go out there and uh, do his thing for the rest of the game. And that's what he did. And it was a, it, it was a, it looked like the balls were flying early and we might have a, uh, lots of scoring going on, but Pablo uh, pitched one of his better games, I think as a, 
as a twin uh, with this, with the win today. And he was just, uh, he was relentless and he was, and, and he kept at it when, uh, you know, he didn't, there wasn't a lot of traffic on the bases, but he was able to get out of the jams that uh, did happen. And I feel like Cole Reagan's had actually a really nice day. And again, lived up to the hype of what we expected. Hard throwing lefty who was going to really make you scratch and claw for every single run. And I think the the main issue or the main difference between him and Pablo was pitch economy today. Um, yeah. Reagan's approached 100 pitches, went six innings, and then they turned it, turned it over to the bullpen. Lopez only through 84 pitches, completed seven. And for a second there, it looked like Rocco was going to take him out. Uh, what was your, what did you make of that? Because as a, you know, as someone who's kind of, like you said, parachuted in the, one of the rallying cries of the anti Rocco crowd is that he has too quick of a hook and that once he goes out there, he can't be talked out of it. And I'll be honest with you. I've, I've defended, the practice of going with relievers because of like times through the order splits and that sort of thing. But even I was like, nah, man, you can't take him out here. He's got like 77 pitches. And again, it's not so much that I cared about the pitch count. It was just like, uh, I don't know, let him have this. And again, I know it's lots first of, game of the season. Yeah. You know, Rocco, lots of things were going through Rocco's head, including all of that, what you mentioned uh, at yep. the time. Uh, it just, uh, the moment kind of snuck on him, snuck up on him a little bit. They did have Brock Stewart, ready in the bullpen just in case. Uh, Lopez gave up a, a scary-ish fly ball to Salvador Perez. Perez jammed on the play. Maybe he jammed himself. I'm not sure. He still hit it it's, over. That's the one Astro kind of stumbled to catch, wasn't it, in left? Uh, I didn't – it didn't seem like a stumble to me. It was – but it was a uh, – he went back on it and then came in kind of thing. I'm not sure if there was a stumble, too. I didn't get a close look. <laughs> it was like a base – it, it was a base clef. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, uh, parenthetical, it was, it was, uh, far enough and late enough in the game. And, uh, Rocco said he was worried about, you know, that Pablo did not have to push himself very hard during spring training. So he just wanted to make sure. And mm -hmm. he's like, you know, he, I, he went out there with the thought of, he'll probably be honest enough with me that I'll know if I have to take him out. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think Rocco was expecting to get anything but resistance, which is what he got from Pablo. Pablo was like, you know, don't even think about it, Rocco. I'm fine. And that, that was, uh, that was what he needed to hear. And he believed him and went back on the dugout. And uh, that was all kind of the right way to play it. I think I'm not even sure if there are some managers maybe that wouldn't have gone out there, but I think that was a good time for a visit just to, just to make sure. And um, yeah, it was, uh, he wasn't tiring or anything, but uh, right. it's still, it's the first game of the year. So you just want to make sure that the, the guy has uh, all the energy that he needs to get through at least the inning. Well, and it's kind of the game within the game. I mean, in college basketball, you know, we're in March Madness right now. Like when you take your timeouts matters. And in yeah. MLB timeouts, I mean, outside of at the plate, not, don't really exist. But going out there for a quick refresh, even if you don't say anything like, hey, uh, you know, throw two sweepers to this guy or anything. It doesn't have to be anything other than a, you know, just a mental reset. You know, you kind of can let the moment speed up on you, even as a veteran. And you just need to kind of be like, oh, you know, I'll lock back in for whether it's Vinny Pasquantino or whoever it was. I can't, I can't yeah. remember who it was. And then, uh, because I don't know, I just, I had this weird feeling. I was like, you know what? Give Stewart a clean inning, but not this one. You know, like he can come in, if he comes in with one out, I'm not worried or anything like that. But, I don't know. I just, I thought that was Pablo's inning. He still only threw what 84 pitches. So, I mean, yeah. they didn't have to push him that hard, even if you considered those high stress pitches. But the important thing too, is that at that point it was two to one, you know, you, you can look back and say, Oh, you know, the game ended four one, you had cushion. Well, in that moment, you don't know that you don't know that you're going to have that space from, uh, was that rule a pass ball or a wild pitch on the one that they just changed about hit? it. What was it ruled? Um, they ruled it a pass ball at first, and they changed it to a wild pitch. Uh, Perez did get his mitt on it, and then it hit Laz Diaz in the shoulder. Yep. And um, Diaz actually called, did the, called the play correctly. And sometimes we give Laz and other umpires, you know, crap or whatever for 
getting it wrong, he got that one right. So, uh, but the official score changed the ruling on that and it ended up being a wild pitch. Yeah, and it looked like he actually was campaigning. Uh, Salvador was for well I think uh, yeah I did not talk to the Royals and I have not seen post game I didn't I don't know my impression was that he thought it was a foul ball or was trying to, to persuade the umpire because otherwise I think he thought it been, I think he thought it hit Julian and would be a dead ball and then maybe. The would have to go back. that's that's that, what that I, that's be, my perception that could, that could be one of those two things yes yep. what you said probably is more likely um, but yeah, it was, it was kind of, uh, nip, uh, not nip and tuck, but it was, uh, the, the outcome was definitely not decided at that point until the twins added yeah. on a couple of extra runs. So, um, earlier in the game, I thought there was a big play, um, it, with Lewis out of the game. I think it was the fifth and there was a, a, a lead off ground ball to third and farmer double clutched on it. And didn't uh, throw the batter out at first base. Who was it? It was uh, Adam Frazier. So he got a leadoff. I single. remember that because yeah. Frazier's not that was, fast, is he? It was uh, oh, for, yeah. For, well, I mean, yeah. He I don't know what his sprint speed is anymore, but yeah, it's not like Bobby Witt. He's not that fast. Witt might be yeah. the fastest player in the league or close. Mm -hmm. um, but Frazier's the kind of guy where you can't double clutch. And Farmer was like, yeah, I, you know, I. That was a it wasn't an error, but it was a mistake on my part. Mm -hmm. And it was the next batter um, hit a ground ball to him. And Farmer actually made a really good play on a tough play because um, it was a it was a it was a short hopper again, and that he came in on. And then he to turn a double play, he had to almost go behind himself to uh, Julian at second, mm -hmm. and who you know pirouetted and threw the guy out at first. It was a tough play for especially for Farmer to make, yep. and he said. You know that was basically that that was a difficult play based on my body positioning. So, but he was glad that he got another he got a chance to kind of uh, uh, get a reprieve for himself and the team, and thought and uh, Pablo thought too that it was a big moment in the game because if that doesn't happen, beginnings have blown up from less. Uh, than oh that. yeah, that could have been a, a game changing moment. Boy, Carlos Correa, Correa, not Correa. I sound like a rube. Um, he looked good. I mean, it wasn't what a, just what a great game. Oh my yeah. goodness! The the, great the feeling hitting, and the, the feeling, feeling the, the running out that ball. Uh, I didn't get a chance to talk to him about it. Maybe some other day. But he made a, a backhanded play and then threw on a hop to first base and uh, bounced the ball like really uh, on the grass and was the, obviously avoiding the lip of the infield. The, the, the old Davy Concepcion play. Yes, and it wasn't you know astroturf. They used to have astroturf at, at Royals yep. at uh, Kauffman Stadium, but it was on grass. He just he wanted to avoid that lip where things could go bad. It was just a, you can see when you watch you, you could go to a game and just see his brain, you know, getting bigger and bigger. Yep. Perea just makes many many smart plays and good athletic plays, and is very much he, fun to watch. He started doing that last year. And it was um, people didn't understand it because we got so conditioned to like Jock Jones back in the day at the Metrodome. He didn't have a great arm. And so yeah. he'd keep the ball low and skip it into home. And if you get enough velocity and it kind of kicks up, you know, that's it's better than nothing. But with right. this, yeah, you almost it, you just you kind of. I'm, I'm trying to envision like you pick a spot on the grass where you want to skip it up and then it's a, it's a shorter path to first base too. Like there's, there's physics reasons to do it besides just if you hit it there, it, it skips up and it's an easy catch for the first baseman yeah. as opposed to risking a scoop. Um, just, yeah. Just an incredible game. The, the, the way he makes, I think the play that I like the most from him is the backhand where he kind of comes up and fires. Yeah. And I think what we lose sight of because the ball hits the ground is this the incredible velocity that it comes out of his hand? Because when he throws a, a, a basically a pea shooter over to first base on a regular throw, you see it, but it can be easy to lose sight of it if he starts doing that throw. Cause he had a couple plays, I think in a row, like back to back chances for him right. where he had to do that. Uh, yeah. You can, you can easily lose sight of the fact that he throws an absolute howitzer or he has an absolute howitzer on his, his right shoulder there. And um, one, just one an incredible thing that I think game. gives him confidence on plays like that is uh you know, Carlos Santana is is a really good defensive player and, and has turned into one and has gotten kind of better at first base as he's gotten older. And uh, you he know, looks if, silky over there. 
He really does. He does. He does. It's and so good. Um, it just gives uh, Correa confidence to know, well, even if the throw is off a little bit, Santana's got this in case something happens. Uh -huh. What did you think? You know, we were talking about lineup stuff before the game. How did you feel like the game flow and how everything kind of panned out uh, worked? Because, you know, Matt Walner didn't get in the game until after Max Kepler actually fouled the ball off his knee or his he knee fouled area. The ball off his knee. Uh, yeah, imaging and, came uh, back negative and all that, but yeah, the game Rocco's, flow though. He thinks he might it might be sore, and it's possible yeah. we we might see him rest in the next game. So, um, but the as game far as flow, the move, well, Rocco the thought the that game. they did a, a pretty good job. The offense did a pretty good job against Reagan's. They made him work just enough. You kind of mentioned mm -hmm. that he had to throw a few extra pitches uh, when compared to Pablo, and you know. Buxton, Byron Buxton sort of took the opposite tack uh, early. <laughs> yeah. He swung it. He swung at two pitches and made two outs in his first mm -hmm. two at bats. Um, but he got on base a couple other times after that. So that that was kind of a, another good, you know, it was um, people worried in spring training about the other shoe dropping with Byron. And, uh, you know, is he hopefully not going to get hurt? And he made it through. He made it through spring training. He made it through the yep. first game. There weren't any scary play. There was one scary-ish play in the outfield. He didn't have to make any great plays, Byron, but there was one ball. Uh, Bobby Witt hit a seeing-eye double that was um, – Willie Castro converged uh, with uh, Carlos and with mm -hmm. uh, Buxton in short center field. It turned into a double. But oh, yeah. That, that wasn't bad. Um, and I, I also want to mention Castro played left instead of Margot, which surprised me but maybe shouldn't have because – they don't want to DH Castro because they might want to switch his position later in the game, mm -hmm. go to second base or whatever. And if they had made him a DH, then that plays with the rules and, and limits you. So that's why uh, Margo was the DH, uh, at least until Kirilov pinch hit for him in the middle of the game. And, I'm glad uh, you came, it came over to the dark side because I was trying to convince you before the game. Yeah. Well, I know that's why they did it. It's still... I still it's, have questions about why you go tricky. and get Margot if he's going to be a DH. It just doesn't make sense to me that necessarily that would be your DH, but whatever. That's another topic. For another I, well, in against a, a, it would only be against a lefty, against a righty if Castro's out there. Uh, I know, but still, it's still it's, I, I get it. It, it was I, weird to me to not have. Wouldn't you want? I mean, if you moved, if you moved Castro to the infield for some reason. Let's say you wanted to pinch hit him for a farmer or whatever. Um, well, that wouldn't make sense because he would have been starting the game. I don't know, man. It's, it's been a long day. <laughs> it's uh, it, it gives us some fun fodder to talk about. I don't know if you saw it, by the way, Nelson Cruz signed a one day contract to retire as a member of the Mariners. If there's been a twin mercenary, and by that, I mean a player that they signed who is not in their prime or anything. Right. Um, outside you mean of that in the nicest Tomei, way, nicest the nicest possible. mercenary ever. Yep, he uh, he like Jim Tomey is on that list, but Nelson Cruz, man, uh, Twins fans just adore that guy. Well, he's pretty adorable. Uh, he really I is. like him too. He's a good. Uh, he seems like a good dude. Uh, I know he had the, the one black mark against him as far as mm -hmm. PED uh, suspension, uh, and I, I would be a jerk to bring that up, wouldn't I? But um, <laughs> you're a jerk. I certainly forgive him or, or whatever. Not that I have to, but I, I don't dwell on it. Um, so that's cool that Nelson Cruz is going to have a, a nice ceremony for the Mariners and a, and a goodbye. And he, he had a great season or however long it was for the twins. How long was it? A season and a half season, season and a half. Yeah. Um, and it turned into Joe Ryan in a trade. So thank you for that. Or was it two and a half now that I'm, you know what? I'm, it might have been. I'm, I'm second guessing myself because I think it was a two year deal and then a one year. Why did I just search for Nelson? It's late, friends. The band it really Nelson. is. And, and yeah, so, it turned into, no, that's Hanson, isn't it? No, the, Nelson predates Hanson. The two blonde uh, kids. Two and a half Nelson. years. Yep. Okay. Ricky two Nelson's and a half years. Sons. Um, so can I just do a couple like random observations? So Buxton looked okay. Looked okay yep. in the outfield. It was good to see him go. Ryan Jeffers hit second, which I didn't see coming. That didn't really Nobody work did. out. But that's fine. Rocco's like, he's he's kind of he earned the he earned the opportunity. He said he had a yep. good hitting year last year. Had a good hitting year in camp. Left-handed pitcher made sense to do that. Sounds mm -hmm. good to me. 
Um, Kepler might have a sore knee, might not play in the next game. Um, Castro made some really good plays in the outfield, um, aside from that weird one with Sal Perez. Um, and Kirilov pinch hit for Margot in the middle of the game. I didn't even – I didn't notice it at the time. I didn't realize it. And then he came <laughs> up again, and I thought he got a pinch hit single. But that was his second at bat. And Margot's not hurt or anything. It's just yeah. they wanted to get Kirilov in at bat. They just wanted to get him into the game, and that's why – he did that. So there's no injury with, with Margo. So. Yeah, no, it's just a platoon thing. By the way, uh, Nature is Healing. Eddie Rosario homered off Emilio Pagan today. So I don't know if Twins fans know exactly how to process oh, that. Oh, wow. News, but, That's um, wild. I love yeah. I remember, I don't know if it was his first game, but I remember Eddie Rosario hitting a triple or something. It was like the first game that he played in front of his family. He homered, he homered on the first field. at bat. It might have even been the first pitch, which is the most Eddie Rosario thing of all time. Of course. Uh, yeah, but I, I liked him too, even though he wasn't on my team or anything. The bullpen guys did okay. Brock yeah. Stewart did good. Uh, Jax started out a little wild, but filled his role fine. So, um, you know, they didn't have all, you know, worried about the, the bullpen injuries, but those guys were good in relief of, uh, of Pablo. Well, maybe the starters will just go seven every game and it won't matter. But, Dave, That's thank you so much. Happen, for, yes. Yep. Thank you so much for your hard work at the K today uh day off tomorrow that weather built in day for al central games and a lot of other ones but sounds like the weather won't be so bad that they would have needed it but for a day off we'll take it thanks everyone for hanging out with us we may come back we'll tee up game number two tomorrow and if that's the case one thank you for listening to locked on twins and for dave brown and myself we'll say we'll see you tomorrow night <laughs>